Hi, my name is Peter Knett, and I am here with Pat Mills and Io, the directors of the new Heritage Minute on Jackie Shane. Um, welcome, and thanks for being here. Thank you for having Thank us. You. So maybe to start things off, maybe you both can tell me a little bit about yourselves and your work leading up to this and how you got together to make this very short film. I had worked with Caitlin Brown and Vanessa Magic, who were the producers of the Heritage Minute, on a CBC digital series called Queens. And they approached me about directing this Heritage Minute. And we all knew that we wanted to bring in a co-director. And we did this search and we interviewed a lot of people. And when we met Io, it was like a slam dunk. It was like, your work blew us all away. I remember, I remember the exact like day because I was on Instagram and I saw a casting for Jackie Shane's Heritage Minute and I was like, I just know I want to be involved. And so I reached out to the casting director and I said, I would just, I'll just be on set. Like, I, I'll, I'll PA, I'll do whatever. I just want to be a part of this because I love Jackie Shane. And then I get an email and then all of a sudden it was just like, would you like to interview for the co-director position? I was like, oh, yeah, sure, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Long way from Nashville and Mama, I tell you that. Performed from Montreal to Boston to Los Angeles. But Toronto, that's my chosen home. Sure, when I'm walking down Young Street, I see some funny people who have the nerve to point the finger at me. When did you each sort of become aware of Jackie for the first time? And maybe talk a little bit about what you learned about her maybe through the process of making the Heritage Minute. Mm -hmm, yeah, um, I learned about Jackie Shane for the first time through Queer Songbook Orchestra, which uh, I'm one of the biggest fans of QSO ever. Um, they they do these sh queer concerts where they, the format is basically someone tells a story and then the orchestra performs a song. So I went to a show and I heard about Jackie Shane and then I, I heard Any Other Way performed um, and I was, I was blown away um, and I was moved to tears and I thought, how cool is it that there was a black trans woman who's an iconic musician in Toronto? I think I discovered Jackie Shane around the time of the re-release, around like 2017, 2018. 18, yeah. And just that we had this amazing story in this city mm -hmm. that, you know, Toronto nowadays just seems so dull in comparison. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, way back then, and Jackie was uniquely herself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she was able to power through and have the confidence to be who she authentically was before there was a support system or other people that you could find. Mm -hmm. And so I was always inspired by that story and the music I was a fan of as well. And yeah, that's how I really discovered Jackie Shane. But then when you try and find information about Jackie, it's really, really hard to find. Yeah, It hasn't been documented right. properly. A lot of the articles, there's some like misgendering of Jackie, yeah. especially way back then. I mean, with the Heritage Minute, we had to do a lot of research. Yeah, and we learned a lot of stuff. I yeah. mean, people did reach out to us. There were some people who reached out to us who had like photos from, from her performances and people who were saying to us, like, I was there on the night that she performed at this place or whatever. Um, and when you even look at the, I have the record from the re-release, the 2018 Any Other Way re-release, and you read through the jacket and you actually, you find all these interesting stories. And, and we would come across some new photos of her, like with her cats and stuff. And there was just like so much really interesting little, like these little nuggets that we kind of like got to piece together to, to kind of build the character for the Heritage Minute that was based on the real person, like the iconic legendary. She had highlights to like blonde highlights before it was really that cool to do. It was really awesome. And it must have been a little daunting considering this is a Heritage Minute, so it is literally one minute. How did you go about the process of taking this mammoth life and turning it into 60 seconds? Well, kudos to J.P. LaRock, who yeah. wrote the script, who did a lot of the heavy lifting about like doing the research, and our producers were you know, really, really helpful in that regard. Yeah. We had historians. We had yeah. an entire team at Historica Canada like helping us out. Yeah, it was tough. There were some things that we had to cut, but yeah. I think we kind of shot for the stars and then, and then tried to scale things back a little bit. I've never worked on anything where every single detail was scrutinized, where yeah. Um, everything had to be historically accurate. And we had this document that would have arrows to a line of dialogue and cross-referenced that to an article in the Toronto Star in like 1970 to make mm -hmm. sure the Sapphire may or may not have had a dressing room. Like yeah. just crazy amount of like scrutinizing, even down to the swizzle sticks at the yeah. bar. We had you know, to like, like reorder different props because it didn't work. So. 
when you're watching it and it, it come, the runtime is down to a minute, there's like, there's decades of story in there. And I think that's kind of what helps tell the story, such a big story in just a minute. I was just being me. Never tried to explain myself to anyone. And besides, none of that don't worry, Jackie, because I know I look good. Got a new way of loving, baby. God, I want to teach it to you. To now be making this about Jackie Shane with a group of queer artists, like, do you want to talk a little bit about what it felt like to um, come together like that to create this? It felt kind of surreal to even be making a Heritage Minute at all and to be making it about Jackie Shane, a queer, like a, a trans, a black trans woman in Toronto was also surreal. And then to kind of look around and feel comfortable in the space that we were making it in. If there were a lot of straight white people on set, it just would have probably felt a little icky. And there were, there were a lot of things that were really tough about the production that we had to like be real about. And we were on Zoom a lot of the time. And so we would be having meetings and we'd be having like kind of difficult discussions about like, what is the crowd gonna look like? How are we gonna cast this? And if we didn't have um, queer folks on the team, people of color, black folks who were like actually a, a big part of the planning as well, um, it would have been really weird and awkward. Like it would have just been like a lot of like tough discussions um, without like a cushion to land on. And I think we all had our fair share of like, um, of concerns that we brought to the table that were, were met and respected. Um, and that is 100% due to the team that we had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now that it's out there, like what's the response been like? Like um, maybe just tell me a little bit about people that have reached out to you or, or how it's felt getting this out into the world after, I'm assuming it was probably a considerably long process putting together this one minute. It just goes to show you that uh, it, it, it is a powerful story. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have responded to it. A lot of people are learning who Jackie was. Mm -hmm. And that makes me proud of what we did because we're introducing Jackie to new people. Yeah. It's been really interesting. I mean, from from the moment I knew that I was going to do it, I was I was really excited because I was like, "Oh, this is going to be great and my teachers are going to love this." Like I thought about my grade 10 and 11 teachers cuz I only came to Canada in grade 10. So I've only been here for about 9 years. Um, and a huge part of my Canadian education was were Heritage Minutes. So when I learned who Terry Fox was, it's because I watched the Heritage Minute. And I remember reaching out to my teachers kind of like when we were in the production process and telling them like, hey, I made a Heritage Minute. <laughs> and they were freaking out and it was really awesome. Um, so in, in a lot of ways, like a part of the people who I dedicate this work to, um, like with all of my work, are black, queer, and trans folks everywhere. But also my teachers who are like really, really instrumental in bringing interesting and different ways of learning into the classroom and into my psyche enough for me to be able to be a storyteller. And like Pat said, to be like an, a part of educating people about Jackie Shane. Um, I think it's really awesome that she was a black trans woman who wasn't necessarily from Canada, but made Canada and Canadian culture seem awesome. Because it makes me feel as a black trans immigrant that like, I'm kind of like doing the do <laughs> and and creating like part of Canadian history. My song was number two on local radio. Sold 10,000 in Toronto alone. Turned down Ed Sullivan because they asked me to remove my makeup. Wouldn't do American Bandstand because of their segregation policies. You know, given how dense this research was and how much uh, you learned about Jackie or already knew about Jackie, was there something from her life that you didn't get to put in the minute that really sort of stands out to you as like a story that we should know or a, an element of, of Jackie's life that we should know about? She played with The Temptations. She played with Etta James, Marvin Gaye. Like there were so many wonderful, amazing things that she did that just ended up as, as lines in the minute that I think we could have dived a little deeper into, like that could have been awesome to see and seeing how the reality of being a black trans woman in the music industry and how, how she really got like frustrated with a lot of things and decided to leave the industry um, and then move, move back to the States and take care of her mother um, before she passed away. She kind of lived a very quiet life uh, towards the end. Well, I mean, hopefully this spurs more cultural investigations into Jackie's life and also spurs people who see the, the minute to go online and do as deep a dive as they can to learn out more about Jackie because, yeah, I mean, there is, uh, as you said, there's sort of like a, a lack of overall research done, but hopefully mm -hmm. this, yeah, 
uh, gets people to do more and gets people more interested in, in reading what is out there. Is there anyone else that sticks out to you that really deserves a Heritage Minute or a story? I mean, this can be like a serious answer or a not serious answer. Oh, my very, very serious answer for this is Beverly Glenn Copeland, who yeah. very amazingly did the voiceover at the very end. So um, Dion Brand is also on this mug. And I so think- So is Beverly Lynn Copeland. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, there we go. Um, and so I think those two, those two are my, my, my go-tos for, for more people who need Heritage Minutes. Thanks so much for spending time with me today and telling me all about this minute. If you haven't seen the minute, it's available online. Just Google Heritage Minute Jackie Shane and enjoy the brilliant minute of work that the two of you spent a year making, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Three, two, one. You should we use your fist bump. There we go. Should we do like this thing? Yeah, yeah like that. Yeah.